Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe with episode number 26. Yes, we finally breached the first 25. And where will this end? Who knows? Um, but for now, we're going. So, Cannibal Apocalypse or Apocalypse Domine. Um, in other words, translated Apocalypse Tomorrow, which is a take on Apocalypse Now, of course, Francis Ford Coppola's seminal classic military piece, uh, Vietnam piece. And this is, of course, a Vietnam piece uh, brought to us, uh, uh, sort of a post-war um, come home, what comes after war, uh, brought to us by one Antonio Magarati, um, and uh, who, you know, uh, Kino Lorber put out a really fantastic edition of this, um, a great documentary, which uh, really is uh, interview with Margarati and uh, Saxon um, and Giovanni Lombardo Radici. Um, but the surprise little gem on here though is an interview with Tony King, which I found absolutely fascinating uh, and sort of reinvigorated my uh, revisiting of this film, watching him in particular. Um, absolutely joy this movie is. Um, uh, Margarati, what can you say about him, man? Uh, Euro crime, action thrillers, sci-fi, horror. Uh, my my three favorite films outside of the Cannibal Apocalypse from him, um, The Long Hair of Death, uh, just a gothic masterpiece, man. Uh, from '64 with Barbara Steele, uh, Killer Fish with one of my idols as a young kid, Lee Majors, man. Uh, some piranha action there in what '79. And Battle of the Worlds, go back to 61 with uh, one of my favorite actors of all time, Claude Rains, man. Uh, so there's three right there, man. But he's, his filmography is huge, man. Uh, and this one, this one has a trio of actors, man, that, uh, I mean, John freaking Saxon. Um, what do you say about him? Um, Tony King, Giovanni, Lombardo, Redici, Rip. Um, God, I hate it that he has left us. Um... This has been said to be uh, sort of a, uh, a Dawn of the Dead Apocalypse Now uh, combo piece. Um, it, it's interesting. Uh, what uh, lies under the surface, some of the issues that Margarati is dealing with here in just post-traumatic stress, but what, more importantly, what does war do? How can war be infectious? Uh, is it infectious? And once it's brought home, can it just begin to spread amongst the population? Um, that is a message extremely relevant for the moment, for the here and now. With this absolute mess in Ukraine, uh, it seems like every day uh, I have my places where I look for news. I do not glue myself to 24-7 cable outlet news. I refuse. I don't believe half of it. Uh, it's junk mostly. Um, but these, these, these psychotics... Uh, that just, I don't know, it's almost like they want another war, big one. Um, and so messages like this, compliments of uh, Magarati, are very timely and relevant and give us, ought to give us huge cause and to think about war. Just recently uh, revisited with my son, one of my younger sons, James, watched um, Hacksaw Ridge the other night. And, and I was just overcome emotionally with um uh this the scene of his dad in the cemetery um and just his post-traumatic stress and how that impacted the family and uh, of course going back to trench warfare world war one um and, and that um oh golly um so the question is what is what can war do when people are freed of it but come home and try to reintegrate back into society. So these three, um, Giovanni Lombardo Ridici, who plays Charlie, of course, here, and uh, uh, Tony King, um, golly, I can't think of, um, yeah, Tom plays the character of Tom. Uh, of course, John Saxon plays Norman Hopper. He was their commander, uh, both Tom and Charlie's commander in Vietnam. And so... The really, this film is insane, man. This film is so enjoyable. It's so much fun to watch. Uh, the camera work is unreal. 
the close-ups on the face it's like these people were these people the camera loves these faces i mean i don't care if it's lombardo Ridici's face john saxon's elizabeth turner who plays john saxon's wife in this movie um even Mary, man, uh, the flirtatious girl who lives next door, who's got her own dysfunctionality, which, by the way, her younger brother uh, was John John in City of the Living Dead, or will be, should I say. Um, and the composer here of this, uh, you know, I was hearing tinges of what sounded like House by the Cemetery. He will go from this project to House of the Cemetery and contribute to the score there and so i thought that was interesting um this film first released uh vhs uh by vestron uh surprises me that uh i don't think vestron's ever re-released this via dvd or blu-ray which is interesting uh, and they got that new line series these series going on uh and it's too bad that maybe they they just haven't been able to get their hands on it or whatnot. But filmed here in my hometown of Atlanta, it's fun to see. In fact, the house, the main house where uh, the um, the Hoppers live is about 40 minutes from my house, actually. No, I've never driven over to it. Uh, I've been tempted to. Uh, I may at some point. Um, but of course, a lot of the city streets I'm familiar with. Uh, I don't go into the city very often. Uh, of course, the varsity is shown in here. Um, and so it is interesting. It is interesting. Uh, let's see, Giannato De Rossi, man, uh, supplies the special effects, special makeup. Uh, of course, uh, High Tension, he came out of retirement uh, with Aja to do that one. Um, and uh, of course, Zombie, right? Um, worked with Gino De Rossi on that one. Uh, writer, Dardano Cicchetti, man, working with Magarati on this beautiful film. Uh, I mean, I love Cicchetti, man. He's probably... He may be my favorite Italian writer, man. Um, just awesome. Um, okay, so basically what we have here, and I've sort of already laid this out, but this film really is uh, built upon three basic real set pieces. The opening nightmare sequence uh, that Hopper has, uh, we realize at the end of it that it is a nightmare. But he's back in Vietnam, and he's uh, it's the point where he rescues... Um, both Tom and Charlie, they're in a hole. And when he discovers them, they have been captured by the uh, the North Vietnamese, uh, the Viet Cong, I guess. Uh, uh, they are uh, a Vietnamese soldier or girl uh, had been uh, killed and dropped in the hole or falls. And they grab her and pull her into the hole. They, they're feasting on her, man. Uh, the set, the gore pieces are not anything like we will, we've seen in zombie or other things. Uh, the gore is never that excessive, although there are a couple sequences. Charlie's demise, I, I'm thinking of just one. Um, but uh, he rescues him, and as he leans his hand in to uh, pull up uh, Tom, Tom, uh, played by Tony King, takes a chunk out of his arm. And uh, but that that sequence uh, quickly dissolves into black and white, which we see Hopper wake up out of his nightmare. And I thought that was just a fantastic um, way to do that. Uh, and so that leads in very quickly. We find out that Charlie is about to be released, although probably a little too early from the, I think he's, they're in an insane asylum um, hospital. Uh, Tom is still in there. Uh, Charlie gets out. He can't handle, he can't handle things. He ultimately just dissolves very quickly, gets himself into a scrape in a movie theater. Uh, which ultimately gets him to our next major sequence, which is the flea market sequence, which, of course, uh, Hopper will show up um, like Rambo style here you know, as a commander trying to get a hold of his uh, uh, the leash uh, that is uh, Charlie, get him back under his reign. Um, and so that whole sequence where the cops have the flea market under siege and uh, ultimately he does get him out of there. Um, and we see him, of course, taken back to the hospital where uh, Tom still is. But but this whole moment where, you know, Hopper's been living the good life. Him and his wife have the good life um, until Charlie comes back into the scene. And it begins with a telephone call, uh, which he receives from Charlie. At that moment, he's being semi-entertained by Mary, the flirtatious girl next door. He wants to borrow something. Uh, but she's doing it because she wants to take advantage of the situation. 
we see him seemingly beginning to recipro reciprocate, but it's not what we think. His resisting isn't uh, sexual in nature. It's it's the resisting the wantonness to bite her and to take a chunk out of her, to begin to eat her. And this is what he is descending into, this bit of madness. Um, so it's interesting uh, play on one another thematically in that in that scene. You think it's going one way, but it's really something else, uh, which ultimately is unfolded. In, uh, he lays it out for his wife to try to explain because he wants help. He doesn't want to be in this situation. Uh, and it doesn't help that you have this functional house next door and this girl who uh, really, it's just sort of messed up, right? But anyways... Uh, so you got the whole flea market sequence, which is awesome. Uh, ultimately, uh, he will he will ultimately um, give in to his desires, albeit he's trying to protect his wife from it. But ultimately, this will lead him to um, and other people are attacked along the way, and the infection starts to grow and starts to spread. Um, not like Nightmare City, or say even something as new as um, well. I was just thinking the crazies at first, but. Um, the um, 28 Days Later film, this the idea of rage, infection, um, right, going from person to person. It's nothing as, as, as crazy as that, but ultimately, Hopper will free both Tom and Charlie from the hospital, and, the, and they will lead a chase with the police that will descend into the sewers uh of the city of atlanta which will take us to our final conclusion which ultimately ends back in the hopper house um but the whole sequence underneath the sewer in the sewer underneath the city is absolutely fantastic uh th th this guy's penchant margarite's penchant uh to direct these kind of scenes it is remarkable to say the least uh he he has this innate ability to just create incredible action sequences, right? That do involve, in this case at least, uh, a bit of splash of horror, uh, right? Because you are dealing with a bit of cannibalism, which unfortunately, John Saxon was in a really bad moment of his life when he came onto this project. And although he uh, had a penchant for the Italian uh, film crews, loved working Italian cinema, of course, remember Tenebrae from Magento. Um, he was in the middle of a divorce, had two mortgages, and it just and when he found out that the script that he initially bought into was not quite what he thought, it, it just he as he says he really sort of depend, uh, descended into a bit of depression, which really overall I think hurt his experiences on this film, which is really too bad. Um, Tony, this this film was everything for Tony King though. Tony King had an absolute blast. They all had a blast. Uh, it's too bad that John Saxon. Um, had the experience that he did here um but things would get better with him uh i mean shortly in 84 i mean he'll be in a nightmare on elm street right so uh it's interesting so this notion of war having this innate infectious quality that can spread from person to person um is a it, it's an intriguing thought uh especially in light of where we are today in the moment and what people ought to really be thinking about um, because this whole thing with Ukraine um, between those in the East and those in the West, th this really is the battleground that could explode into something really horrific. And I, I don't think, I'm a little bit of a student of history and I don't think anyone wants any of that. Uh, not these days, not with uh, technology as it is and just the horrors that, um, await those who seemingly just ah, seemingly don't care about where this may take us ultimately and so uh i love films like this i wish these films were were more uh accessible to the general crowd uh you, you gotta i guess have somewhat of a love for italian cinema um but uh those of us who do are reminded by some of these things occasionally depending on the film that we are looking at and here um Golly, what a movie, man. A cannibal apocalypse, man. It's it, it, it's it's not to apocalypse now in this notion where, where that film was there in the here and now on the ground, uh, in the field, so to speak. This movie says, let's go home and see what happens when the war comes 
home and how is this uh how this infection um can spread from person to person to person and so really the cannibalism is a metaphor for um the violent nature of war and what war can do and as i, I mentioned earlier um hacksaw ridge and just the scenes involving um our hero's uh father um uh, for the life of me i can't think of his name now though um um matrix lord of the ring i mean he's been in tons of things um but those of you who've seen the film i mean, obviously know what i'm talking about um yeah and so there you go i guess i'll just i'll wrap it up there uh the kino lorber uh again this release is really fantastic release um it's got uh the uh in uh inverse artwork whatever um look a lot of great hands on this thing man uh, from the, the composer, you know, down to Giannato, uh, De Rossi to, uh, um, uh, Sacchetti's writing, um, of course here in my home of Atlanta, it's good stuff, man. Margarati, man. When is Margarati not good stuff? Um, so anyways, uh, there you go. Italy's Holocaust, uh, looking at films from 79 to 94. And in episode number 26, uh, we, uh, we find ourselves in the midst of some cannibal apocalypse, and uh we'll see where we go from here maybe some uh i don't know maybe some nightmare city or we'll just really do something different anyhow as always win these things off with go bills <laughs>